Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Real Hacker Hours podcast. This is basically where I just do my normal side project work. I just hit the record button before I do it. Today, I'm going to be looking at a tool that hopefully will help me with post fix. If not, post fix is certainly coming with a lot of other targets. Called SimGrip. Effectively, what this tool is, it's, it is a source code auditing tool. You effectively give it a, a code base along with a set of different rules that it will run. And effectively, it'll just scan through the code base, and if there are any pieces of code that match a rule, it will rep report it to you. Right now, to get started, I'm just writing a rule that says, oh, hey, check if the gets is ever called, since in time gets is called. That is a buffer overflow bug. Here is the rule itself. I specify the ID, languages I want to check for, message if it gets flagged, the pattern, which it just gets with anything in the middle, and right now specifying the severity. For the severity, whereas I just had it up, it looks like there were three different. Give me a second. Oh, wait, no, it's on this other tab. Yeah. The three different types of severities I can have are the info, warning, or error. Um, I'm going to go with, with info because I'm getting information. So I think this rule is ready to, to go. Uh, let's see, how do I run this? No. Wait, running rules, that's it. Simgrit, tack config, you specify the config, which is the rule set. And then you specify the source, so let's try that. Rules are right there. That is this right there. Misclicked. Okay. There we go. It's formatted nicely now. Cool. So also, the source code, well, this source code right here is in this directory, as you can see right there. So let's go ahead and run this. Found character that cannot be. S okay, so it looks like it needs us to use space instead of tab. So let's change it to be that. No valid configuration file found. Hmm, okay, apparently the config files wanting isn't the rules itself. Custom rules example. Testing rules. Where I'm look, need a like a example a sim grip config, which I'm pretty sure it's here. I just have to find it. Writing, wait, getting started. Let's just run sim grip locally. Right or wrong? Hold on. Writing rules. Do apply. Okay, pattern syntax, rule syntax, pattern examples, custom rule. I think I just looked at this, pretty sure I did. Managing findings. I'm just going to look up make simgrip config file. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna pause it while I look this up. 
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I figured out the syntax. It's this right here on j just a few like space errors that I had to deal with. And when you run some grip, you find oh hey we found um yeah this rule flagged it severity info yeah that cool so we see that has been flagged next we so this rule is probably the simplest rule we can ever write effectively is a function called. Let's try to step it up a notch. Let's say, hey, are we writing to, like, is it a function like f gets that is writing to a stack buffer? Because that can be the basis of a stack overflow bug. So, I'm just going to be lazy and copy this. f gets stack. Um, actually stack. For now, we're just right. The purpose of this rule is to see is f gets scanning in data into a buffer on the stack. So, message f gets is No, in practice, I probably want to add on additional features to this because it would give me a ton of different um, false negatives that way that I have to sort through. However, this is just um, trying to get, get used to this tool. So for this, I'm probably going to have to look at the real syntax a bit. Required optional pattern. Pattern operator looks for code matching its expression. Expression. Is it just like regex that it uses? The patterns operators perform a logical and operation in more children. Patterns. DB query. Pattern not D. Okay. Pattern either. Before searches for a. Checks, meta variable comparison. Okay, this is a bit interesting. A set port. Meta variable can see by expression. This is useful for filtering results based on a meta. What this meta variable might actually come in handy. Well, how does it work? Patterns module sitting super user port. Okay, it this one right here, um what it's doing is it's looking at the function set port and the argument and just checking is this argument greater than a particular value. That might come in handy. Actually, someone probably already has code for this Oops. up on Google. I'm going to look for it. Sim grip. Check if variable is on stack. Rule set. Okay, that isn't it. Hmm. Well, since we have it here that we can, here's the code to check if, um, where is it? Yeah, code right here to check if a numerical argument is greater than a particular, actually, wait, what is this? Okay, never mind. I was just looks like they just added on um, an additional base system. I was just like curious if that 
um, something special that we need to worry about. Since we already have the code here for a um, yeah, checking a numerical argument, I'm just going to write a code to do that. Because what the plan is for this rule, after I get it done, I want to be able to check, oh hey, it is writing in x it's writing in 50 bytes into a stack buffer that only has 30 bytes i feel that is a good rule to start off with and for that what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have a rule or the ability to evaluate how many bytes is being read in which can be done through this comparison right here and we'll be able to need to identify if the source is on the stack and if it is in the stack how big it is so let's go ahead and write a rule for the numerical part so patterns pattern f gets Arg zero, arg one, arg two, meta variable comparison. Comparison. Let's check if R2 is greater than 100. And looking back at this meta variable. Okay, I think this rule looks like it. It's good. Let's try running and see if it runs. Oh, made a mistake. This should be pattern. Pattern colon. Yeah, this this next this video is probably going to be a lot of just oh hey is this format working. So the rule can run. Let's go ahead and add in a source code file where it should get flagged. F gets dot C. Oh, it made a directory. I ah, did not mean to do that. Okay, let's write our code, include void, void char input 50, f gets, wait, what is, I just smooth brain this. Yes, it did. The size is the second argument. So I need to correct the rule. Input size, let's do 200. And stream, let's do standard in. Let's make sure that it's valid via compiling it. Nope, I believe it's under case. This is what happens when you don't write C in ages. You forget basic stuff. Okay, that's good. This compiles. Let's, oh wait, no, we need to make the change to the rule. This should be arg one. Cool, now let's try running the rules. F gets gets called in. Okay, cool. 
let's try changing this to 50. It should not get flagged. Okay, so it is indeed checking that. Cool, we can ha we have the ability to if evaluate a numerical argument to a function. That is good. Now, let's see. Pattern inside our pretty keeps match facts. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to be doing a lot of regex type logic with this, which kind of makes sense. Metaverbal. Hmm. Looks like there might be some functionality where we can actually like establish a Python function to evaluate, which would probably be helpful in certain instances. Other complete useless comparison. Powder not inside this. Default configuration file format. Let's, this is probably what we're gonna need. If you modify this file, it probably has to be updated. Okay, this is not gonna help. Okay, cool. I'm gonna Google semgrip check where variable is referenced. Pattern syntax. Calls with arguments after a match. Hmm. Okay. Cool. So, since this is pretty much just turning into just like me reading a bunch of docs, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys for watching.